Welcome back. Many people have returned home after completing the Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca. It's a once in a lifetime journey. Pilgrims perform the Hajj hoping that their faith and God consciousness will be elevated. They hope too that their Hajj will be accepted and their sins forgiven. How can pilgrims transform the spiritual high of Hajj so that the experience has a lasting impact on their life? With me is Dr. Shabir Ali to discuss uh, this subject. Dr. Shabir, uh, tell us a little bit about what Hajj is supposed to do for an individual. Mm, Hajj, in a way, is a, is, a, is a microcosm of the whole of life. Life, uh, in a way, is a journey. Uh, we, we come into this world and eventually we'll leave it. Well, uh, the, the Hajj in a, uh, prepares a person to think about departing from this world eventually without any of the trappings and the goods that we become so accustomed to in this world. Uh, for male pilgrims, this is signified in, in the fact that they wear two pieces of unstitched clothing. So mm -hmm. it's a very simple type of dress, the simplest you can, you can go with while still maintaining the decency of covering the body uh, properly. And it's pretty much what an individual would wear when they pass away, right? Mm, true. In Muslim cultures, the way in which we bury is uh, very simple in that, um, you know, give, do away with all of the caskets and so on, which is a lot of money spent on things that's going into the ground and will not uh, help us in any way. Mm -hmm. The Muslim is buried uh, in just some simple um, unstitched cloth, um, white usually to signify purity um, and, and simple. Uh, and, and very little cost involved. Uh, so the, the Muslim pilgrim then, uh, donning a similar type of garment, uh, reminds himself or herself that th this is how we're going to leave this world. Uh, they travel away from family and friends, away from all of their worldly preoccupations from work and business and so on, and then they're devoted totally to the um, service of God. Uh, now, they will gather on the plain of Arafah, where you know, there will be, for as far as they can see, uh, thousands and thousands of other pilgrims similarly dressed. And this would evoke in their minds uh, the uh, idea of the Day of Judgment, when people will all be gathered together, resurrected from their graves, they're standing in judgment before God. Mm -hmm. So it is a highly uh, spiritualized experience. And naturally, when a person comes back from this spiritual experience, we would expect that he or she should live a new and a, a changed life. In fact, it is widely recognized that uh, if, if the, the changed life of a person uh, for the better would, would be a sign that the person's hajj had been accepted. Mm -hmm. So how do you make sure that you maintain this changed life? Because you go back to your daily routine, your family, your friends, uh, your work, uh, everything that you've left behind. Um, how do you maintain that this, this spiritual high, as I mentioned, uh, it remains in your life? Mm -mm. First, it is important for the uh, pilgrim to realize that uh, the, the Hajj has uh, made all of his previous sins forgiven. Th this is promised in, in the Hadith, and it's mentioned in the Quran as well, that um, uh, when, when the person performs the Hajj, uh, he or she is seeking forgiveness from God. And then the hadith specifically says that uh, his, all of his or her previous sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in, in if the Islamic... It's if the hajj is accepted. If the hajj is accepted, mm -hmm. yes. And, and of course, there's no reason why it would not be accepted, except that the hadith says that so long as the person does not get into any wrangling or, or does not commit any act of indecency. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, this is easy to avoid. Uh, it is also easy to fall into a, a <laughs> situation of wrangling with other pilgrims because one's te patience might be tested uh, in such difficult circumstances where people are crowding everybody for the same thing and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but, but if one avoids this, then one returns uh, as a newborn baby. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, you know, if you return with your sins forgiven, you don't want to immediately start committing sins again, right? True, you want to maintain that. And if, if you allow me, I want to say that the uh, newborn baby in Islam is considered to be pure of sin. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not born in sin. Sin is something that you acquire later on in life after you reach the age of discretion and, and you deliberately commit sin. Uh, but uh, the, given this, that the promise is such that the person returns uh, purified of all sins, now the question is, after you've invested all of this money and time and effort and all of that, why do you want to return to sin? Mm -hmm. So if one keeps this focus in mind, then this will be a life 
life-changing experience and it'll be a life changer for the person. Y your question is still valid though. When you are surrounded by family and friends and workmates and back to all of the busy routines of life, how do you maintain this high? Naturally, mm -hmm. you're going the to lose- The memory of Hajj recedes, you know, uh, uh, over time. True, and naturally you're going to lose some of that glow. And for that reason, some uh, people may want to return. Uh, and, and, and some scholars say it's not a good idea to return year after year as some people are want to do because in that case uh, doing it too frequently as well will, will cause even the Hajj itself to lose its luster and meaning for mm -hmm. you. But uh, if you did it let's say once every five years or ten years or something like this after some interval then this will be one way of refreshing that spirit of Hajj. But what do you do in the meantime? Mm -hmm. In the meantime, remember some of the things you used to do while performing Hajj. You used to pray. Well, pray on a regular basis because this is one of the pillars of Islam as well. And if you made Hajj because that was one of the pillars of Islam, why are you neglecting the one which doesn't cost you any money? You know, you spent all of that uh, to go and perform the Hajj, but now it's time to perform another pillar, uh, but you're not doing it. Why? Uh, reciting the Quran. Naturally, when, when you were on the journey, you recited the Book of God a lot. Uh, you made dua and, uh, or supplication to God a lot. Do mo some of this as well. You remembered God. The Quran speaks about the Hajj being a remembrance of God. Well, do that at home as well or wherever you are. You have a break from work. Uh, take a moment to remember God. Uh, in, in many different situations, you're lining up and some people are fuming because the line is long and everything takes so much time. Well, instead of fuming, uh, say a word of remembrance of God in your own mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that will not only help you to get over that difficult situation, but it'll keep the spirit of Hajj alive mm -hmm. with so you. So your patience and things like that, all of those things should reflect the fact that you went to Hajj. True. The way you now, deal with other people. Yes. Now the, the Hajj is connected to some very important historical figures, uh, biblical heroes and prophets, and, and those are mentioned in the Quran as well. Abraham, uh, Ishmael, uh, and uh, Abraham's wife, Ishmael's mother, Hagar. Uh, remember these stories and in fact uh, discuss these stories with your family and your friends and uh, your children. Uh, let your children relate the stories back to you so this will bring back the memories uh, not only of Hajj but uh, of the uh, principles of Islam which have been shaped by the teachings of Abraham and Ishmael and uh, the practice of Hagar. All right we'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time Brother Shabir. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return we will answer questions we've received from you our viewers.